If you like two for one kind of deals, this is the right video for you. We are in the drylands again making progress in and around the newly started Sahara and the Nile area. Which we started off with a small Nile monitor enclosure a few videos ago. This time we are building a new home for the warthogs, which have already been in the park for a long time, but their old habitat is not really that interesting to look at. So now they'll get a new enclosure down here next to the advarks. These two species are now in their own corner, a bit in between the two different African areas, since they can kind of fit into both. The enclosure will be sunk into the ground with a natural looking barrier for a part of it. But not only will we be building for these guys today, we're also going to add another habitat to this part of the park. Right next to the warthogs we'll be adding a mixed species enclosure for plain zebra and nile letway, which we'll get more into later in the video. My first idea was to let this enclosure work sort of as the front barrier for the larger enclosure we are looking at later, but it ended up being more of its own thing, even though you'll be able to sense the other habitat a bit in the background of it. The other times I built for warthogs in this park, it ended up looking too boring. Picks are tricky to build realistic for since it's often hard to keep anything green in a place with picks, unless it's like a large area. So this will mostly be detailed with rocks and wood, and I've also tried to make it appear muddy in one end with help from the enrichment items. I also went with some of the more dried out looking plants to indicate they have at least tried to make something grow in here, if that makes sense. Otherwise I just made sure to have a lot of plants around the enclosure, and in the end it turned out pretty good. I've not been looking much at the warthogs for a while, and now after giving them some attention again I really started to realize how cartoonish they look in this game. The model is alright, but the colors seem a bit too inspired by a certain Disney character. They should be more greys, and they really lack their black hair down the back. Cartoonish looking base game animals is often mentioned in the community, but I don't often see the warthog being pointed out among them. A more consistent art style among the species would be nice to see. You're not going to see me at any billboards or other educational features today. I'm planning on redoing all the signs in the park in a similar way as I did with Welps and Sue. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out this video. I'm just not sure how many of the species from the drylands I'll be able to find in my books but I'll probably follow up on that one day. Both habitats you'll see today will be sharing a building in the back. This building I have changed several times along the way, but you'll see how it turned out when I show off the whole area at the end of the video. But I can promise that I won't change it even more, since I think I might expand it into the Sahara enclosure I'll be doing another day. And maybe we should talk about the future plans for the Sahara and the Nile area. With today's inclusions I would say we're about halfway through it. I got two more species which for sure will be showing up here, which are both very much associated with the Sahara Desert. So you can probably guess what those would be. But I'm considering doing some more drastic changes to the park by removing some of it completely. This means a few species could find homes elsewhere and I'm starting to feel like the flamingos would be better over here. I know there are more species in the game which would fit under this theme, but I don't feel like building for large animals such as giraffes and hippos in this part of the park, since I do not want to make this area too big. The shelter for the warthogs is fairly simple at the moment, I might expand it a bit more into the building later on when the building itself is more complete. I did make a bit of a small backstage area here, but that is also a thing I'll look more into at some point. Today I've been focusing more on the guest and the animal areas. In a moment we'll move on to part 2 of the speed build, which is the enclosure for zebras and Nile that way. This second part will not be a video of the full speed build. It will mostly show how I made the front of the habitat as well as a bridge for the guest. The rest of the enclosure is a similar style to the warthogs, so I thought it wouldn't be that interesting to watch. But of course, there'll be a full overview of the whole area at the end of the video. The Nile Ledways are part of the reason I decided to include the Nile in the theme of this part of the zoo. At first the plan was to just call it Sahara, but I wanted to be able to include a few more species and felt like it made sense from an educational point of view to merge the Sahara Desert with the Nile River, so guests can learn how these areas affect each other. This was also a good excuse to get some animals into the park that otherwise wouldn't fit the theme of the drylands. But since antelopes usually are good animals to mix with different species, I did not want the Letways to be alone in here. For a long time the plan was to add Thompson's gazelles, but sadly that distribution area does not go along the Nile. 
at least not according to the sources I have found. Instead I ended up going with the plain zebra, which got some subspecies within the region of the Nile. This way I also got a classic zoo animal to this part of the park, which might make it more appealing to the public. As you might have noticed, I've used a few different types of plants down in this area that are not anywhere else in the park. The fever tree and elephant grass. I just wanted to give the landscape a bit of a different feeling down here to make it easier to tell the areas of the zoo apart. Making small changes to the foliage selection is a good way to do that. Since the zoo do not have a lot of lakes and such, I usually like to make a big deal out of it when I do add some. So I went with a big bridge-like structure over this one, which also work as part of the barrier for the habitat. It added a bit of theming to this area without it being extreme. I hope you enjoyed this video which was done a bit differently and feel free to leave some feedback on it and don't forget to give it a like. In the rest of the video you'll see how the bridge was built and otherwise you can jump to the end for the full overview of these two habitats. Thank you for stopping by the Twilands.